Okay, so uh, this is the Full Vantage Podcast, and I couldn't be more amped today. Uh, I am excited because my new friend, uh, DJ <laughs> Fedora, is, uh, is here with us, and you are not going to want to miss this. We're going to hit all things music, all things DJing, uh, the come up. We're going to hit uh, football and even some CU football. Uh, it's football season. I don't know if you know that, but it is football season. And so all things, maybe even a little bit of a prime and uh, what prime has maybe even how he has influenced you and how Deion yeah, Sanders absolutely. has kind of been in that. So we're going to hit all things kind of like that direction. And uh, I'm just, I've been looking forward uh, to being in person for yeah. a while because the whole thing with this podcast is like friends. Yeah. Let's make some so. friends. Let's make some real ones, and then let's actually, if there are real ones, we can learn from them. Absolutely. And we can, like, encourage, build, go together uh, w with whatever th that looks like and needs to look like for the futures. And so, uh, uh, and my man has great style. He's always wearing a fedora <laughs> everywhere. Uh, do you care to just, like, as we start, like, what do you do? What's yeah. the regular, like, what are you about? Kind of like, yeah, yes, you're sure. a DJ, but, like, give us the color color in, like, what 10, you're about right now. 10,000 percent. So uh, this is my 15th year as a full-time DJ, um, but I also have my hands in a lot of community projects. I'm a really big community guy. Um, I feel like my focus has changed maybe the last five years of my career, and you realize, like, as a DJ, you're always asking for people to come out uh, to be hired, uh, to be of service, right? And so you're, in a sense, taking from resources from the community. And so the last five years, I've realized that, like, the community you take from, you also need to plant more seeds and, and help that community grow. So I'm very, I'm very giving of my time in terms of, you know, charity and uh, kids and things of that nature. So uh, you can find me in classrooms. You can find me in community stuff, outreach stuff. But... That's kind of what it is. It's, it's, it's DJing slash just community work for me, for sure. Oh, my gosh. That's, and that, that's amazing. What, what I feel is I'm, like, hanging out with somebody who's all over the place. <laughs> yeah, Bro, yeah. all over the place. <laughs> and uh, I love people like that because in a lot of ways I feel like that as well. Right. Uh, but that's, I think that's what happens when you um, get to a point in your life when you realize how community works. Uh, what made you kind of – what, what was the switch that helped you start thinking, oh, like, I should probably start giving back? Was there a moment or? Yeah, I mean, there was a couple pivotal things. I think, like, COVID and the pandemic kind of, it was just kind of like a man in the mirror moment for a lot of us, I feel. And for me, it was just like seeing your community hurt in ways that you hadn't really seen it hurt before. Um, and then on top of that, like, realizing that, there is a grind and a, and a hustle with artists and like just the whole artistry part of it. But there's also always been pillars in the community that support that, right? That like, okay, I'm gonna let you DJ something ridiculous, you know, just to give you a chance. And you, as you kind of get further in your career, you realize like, oh, they didn't need a DJ. Really, they're just supporting me and saying that we support you. Um, and so as the, the realization of that kind of made me, you know, start to realize like, and then like I had like a young DJ call me OG and that's like a, a like a sobering moment because you feel like <laughs> I'm still hustling. I'm still trying to make it like I'm still not where I want to be, but somebody looks at you as their senior. And so as I kind of, there's a, there's a whole new crop of DJs under me that are, you know, so you, you in the struggle, you realize there's beauty in the struggle, but you also realize, man, where I am in year 15 is nowhere where I started. And there's somebody that right now is getting those first gigs and, and all the things. So, you know, being of service and just trying to help the new crop come in for sure. Oh, man. OK, that is that's so cool. I, I would love to I would love to maybe touch in uh, on life 15 years ago. Yeah, yeah. Like what made you. Uh, what made you move to Denver, maybe? And right. even maybe before that, like, to be yeah. honest, you know, as we were even talking before, like, maybe let's just start back further. Yeah, yeah. Like, so what is, what, how, what, can you give us the, the backstory of, like, yeah, okay, absolutely. getting to Denver and, like, you yeah. come up as a DJ and. Yeah, and no, 10,000%. So my story is kind of unique. So first and foremost, like, I was a big football guy, so. I was like a four-star recruit coming out of high school and like 
football, you know, when you're doing sports, like it's your life, it's your livelihood, it's your life. You're, you know, it's the whole adage of I'm doing this to, you know, make it to the NFL and support my mom, buy my mom a house, the whole thing. So I was all in with that. And then, um, but I was having trouble academically, like in high school. And so um, through that, I barely graduated, like barely graduated, but my grades were good enough to still be like get recruited. But my mom just had the foresight and she was mad worried. Like she was just like, I don't think you're gonna survive in a big university just because the traditional school system didn't really work for me. So in that, like my mom would like cry every night about picking colleges. And even at a young age, I had the foresight to know that like, I was just a fighter, you know, fight or flight survivor type of cat. Like whatever environment you put me in, I'm gonna try to make the best of it. So I came to my mom one day and I was like, yo, listen, whatever school you think is best for me, I'll just go there, right? Like whatever it is that you think that I should do, I'd rather just go there because I know that this pain and anguish and these tears you're crying is because you're worried about me. It's not because you have a selfish inclination or that you wanna see me at a certain university. So at the time, Prairie View A&M was at the top of her list because one, it was an HBCU, and two, I had a cousin that was already on the football team. So it was just kind of like a good fit in terms of just me having somebody already there essentially to kind of help me navigate through college life. So I check in uh, the summer before, you know, when you're in football, you check in the summer before. I started doing the workouts and all the things. And at the time, I just didn't feel safe. Like something inside of me, whether it was the equipment, maybe just the harsh change in environment, I just didn't feel safe. And I was like, you know what, man? Like as much as I love football, I don't know if I want to get hurt doing this, especially in an environment that I'm not comfortable with. Well, I had a full ride scholarship. So it's like, you know, call your mom and tell her that you basically are blowing a four year education. And so it was funny because to walk to the football field, you used to have to walk through the dance studio. And so like whenever we walked through the dance studio and like I'd see those mirrors, I'd always just goof around. Like, you know, whether I'm play dancing or whatever, or hear some whatever, and I was always kind of intrigued. So as I, am quitting the football team because I was uh, high on the recruitment list, like the word spread around campus like wildfire, like this guy had a full ride and just quit. Well, like two days later, and maybe like a day before I was supposed to actually leave and go back home, the head of the dance department calls me in her office. And so I go into her office and like, she has me do at the, at the time of like weird balancing exercises and different things, but I had no kind of correlation what I was doing. Because I was an athlete, right, playing, doing football. And she was like, listen, we haven't had a male dance major on campus for 30 plus years. If you dance for me, I'll reinstate your full ride scholarship. So like, other than like playing like hip hop with the fellas or something like that, like I had no idea what I was doing, like what, was, what I was in for, nothing. So, and obviously like when you hear the word dance, you think of like the cool stuff. It's a lot cooler to dance now, you know, in this time than it was back then. But like, you're thinking like hip hop, you know, things of that nature. First class, ballet, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like full tights, full get up, and I'm the only guy. So I'm in a class with, you know, 50 something females and I feel naked. Like I'm like, you know what I'm saying? Full ballet gear, tights, the whole thing. And, uh, so I, and I was terrible, absolutely terrible. And these, you know, these women have been taking ballet since they were, you know, five or six years old, right? So again, I'm just thrown to the, into the fire. And so I, but I'm, you know, just my competitive nature, like the teacher was just like, listen, here's the key to the dance studio. Whenever you want to come in here and work on things. So I was in the dance studio literally for like 12 hours a day my first semester. I checked into college, I think maybe like 2.35, and by end of semester one, I think I was like down to like 160. And I was just like fully committed, like in there every single day, like rain, sleet or snow. Like I remember like I have a best friend to this day, his name's Chris that like talked to me about college. He's like, hey man, like, I don't know if you remember this, but like, he was like, man, you would literally, I'd see you one day 
and I'd see you like 20 days later and like you're like 30 pounds lighter and like you know what I'm saying just like and then you would disappear again and come back and like we we we'd always like see you but we never saw you like type thing and so graduated as a dance major moved to Harlem uh, danced at Alvin Ailey in New York City Ballet. I taught at New York City Ballet for six years. Um, and then my mother got sick. So my mother, so crazy story. So I don't know if you remember the Lion King on Broadway. Like this is right, right when it, like there was the first run of Lion King on Broadway. Oh, yeah, it was crazy. Yeah, so I, the auditions in New York City were absolutely crazy. I think it was like at least 5,000, you know, men that were trying out for what I was trying out for. So... Interesting enough, I made it into the actual show. So I made it as one of the hyena parts in the actual first Broadway cast of The Lion King. So I sat on it for like a day. I was like, you know what? I just want to like relish in this. Like the auditions were like a month long. It was grueling. I just want to like take a day to like, you know, appreciate what this, what this accomplishment, you know what I'm saying, has rendered for me. Next day, I call my brother, and I'm like, man, I got some, I got some news I got to tell you. And he's like, I have news for you, too. And I was like, well, you go first. And he was like, well, you need to sit down. And whenever somebody says, like, you need to sit down, it's yeah. normally not good. And so he was like, you know, mom has stage four breast cancer. And, like, you know, you hear that, and I'm like, so how bad is it? And he was like. Well, she has stage four. And I'm like, well, how many stages are there? He's like, four. I'm like, so this is like as bad as it gets? He was like, basically, yes. So with that news, I never, it, this is probably the first time that my family actually knows this, but I never told anybody. So I called up the choreographer. I was like, listen, I know this is going to sound crazy, but I have a family emergency and I can't do this show. Like I just, my heart's not in it. My head's not in it. So I took the first thing smoking uh, back to Longmont. So my mom has a house in Longmont. Took the first thing smoking, even told all my roommates uh, in Harlem, I was like, listen, all this stuff that is here, you can have it. You know, here's, a, here's the money I have on me that's not going to my flight. And I just basically came back uh, and I took care of my mom for five years. Like literally, you know, took care of her, all the things, appointments, all the things until she passed. Uh, and so, it was 12 years on August 9th that she passed. But yeah, so that was kind of what brought me back to the city. Um, and then, you know, doing the dance thing, simultaneously as I'm taking care of her those four years, I'm involved in a salsa studio in Denver. So that's kind of like, because my mom, even when I was taking care of my mom, she was like, listen, like, you got to get out the house. Like, you literally, like, just, like, I appreciate all the things you do, but you literally, like, she had the foresight to be like, you have to do things too. Like you can't just sit at home, right? So I got heavily involved in this uh, salsa studio in Denver and we actually competed. So I'm a three-time international salsa champion doing this while, you know, I'm, I'm doing the thing with my mom. And so during that iteration, so like it's like a split screen, during that iteration of taking care of my mom and doing salsa, like we had this cat that would come to this, the salsa studio once a month and like in a salsa world, it's called a social. When you have salsa students, they want to dance with the teachers because that's how you get better. So once a month, you have a social to where the teachers come and your students come and there's a DJ and they play music and you guys kind of dance, have like a social. Well, we were playing this, we were paying this cat a lot of money to come in and spin these records. But I was fresh from New York and I had all the records. Like I was giving him stuff he didn't have. And the person I was dating at the time was like, man, like, we're giving this guy a lot of money. Like, you can just learn how to do this, right? So um, I ended up, you know, getting a, my first DJ rig, and that was kind of how I got into the DJ side, was literally to save us money, to save the dance studio money. Um, and so kind of the iteration of my mom passing. After my mom passed, I really didn't dance anymore. Like, I just kind of, it was just a heavy thing for me. And so I never really kind of went back to dance. Um, but the music piece, like I, I kind of went into, you know, the, the deep depression and like, kind of all of those things. And I just remember one day, like, it's almost like just there's so much darkness over my life. And I just heard a record 
And I just remember the way that record made me feel. I don't even remember the song that it was, but I just remember like there was healing in it. Like for some reason, this particular song at this particular time put me in a better space and spirit than I was in. And I was just like, something came over me like, man, like there are people everywhere that need healing. Everywhere, every walk of life, every nationality, every religion, there are people that need healing. And for some reason, like this music can be used as medicine. And that's kind of what like really propelled me into the music side. Because now I'm no longer playing just for people to dance. Like I'm, pl I'm playing to heal and reach individuals. So there was just kind of like a, a, a transformation inside of me that kind of transferred to that and then like just started working on my craftsmanship and my artistry and understanding music, you know what I'm saying? Went back, got my master's in music uh, from CSU um, and that's just, again, studying it. But then after that, it's just kind of been full steam ahead. So there's so much in that, and I wanted to make sure to not interrupt. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <Not to laughs> because nothing. I was a hundred, I'm all in, right? The thing that I'm thinking about mm -hmm. is when you have a story like that, and you have history like that, just even what, with what you just said, what does that do to a young man? Because what you, what you did was you, there was something that said not football. Yeah. You felt that. You made a decision. Like, and then you lost 70 pounds and it, 70 plus pounds. And then right. you get this dance degree and then you've got this big break. It's like it, it looked, it, there's a lot of big breaks as well as uh, disappointments yeah, and absolutely. difficulty. And they seem to be like stacked a oh, little yeah, bit, you know? Time, and I yeah. think that's a lot of times, I think that hap that's maybe even a part of the human experience, right? right. Because that's, I think that's about right. uh, being human and uh, in a lot of ways. But like, what does a story like that, um, what does that do to somebody? You know, going, seeing, seeing it on the other side now, I just have a different sense of resiliency than Ooh, most people yeah. do. I think that with me, I realize that a lot of people try to fall in love with the results of life instead of the journey to get the results. And I think that if you fall in love with the journey to get the results, you're never disappointed in the outcome, right? For me, like, when I put every fiber and morsel of my being into something, there's only two outcomes for me. It's either gonna break me or it's gonna move out of the way. You know what I'm saying? And I think that like with the human condition, there's this sense of sitting on the fence, right? It's like you're on the sideline of your own life because you're afraid to be hurt, you're afraid to be discouraged, you're afraid of failure, um, you're afraid of just things not pandering and working out. When I look at my life though, Every failure and everything that I poured into was like a building block for the next thing. You know what I'm saying? Like football not working out, dance not working out. Now I'm a DJ for a football team. So it worked out, right? Didn't work out how I felt it was going to work out. But in a sense, now it's really hard to be like, he's not qualified for what he's doing because of these steps that I've gone through, right? People tell me all the time, like, man, how do you get people, like, people dance at my parties, like, literally dance and, like, get free at my parties. People be like, man, how do you do that? I'm like, fam, that was me. I come from this. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Yeah. I, I approach DJing as somebody that wants to move and wants to dance, but... In order to get that perspective, I had to wear the tights and do the, you know what I'm saying, the goofy school recitals and all of that. Like, it's it's a part of my DNA, you know what I'm saying? And even being comfortable in my own skin, right? Um, like, my favorite quote is, a comfort zone is a beautiful place where nothing grows. And there's a lot of people that seek comfort rather than growth. But then when you seek comfort, 
you kind of like after a while be like, why aren't things moving for me? Like, why isn't the needle moving for me? And a lot of times it's, it's, it's you have too much comfort in your life. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I run to the thing that I feel is like going to stretch me. Like, I, I run to that thing. And I think when you run to that thing enough, it becomes a way of life to where you are more in seeking than, you know, like, it's not a destination for me. Like, it's a, I feel like my life will forever be on a journey towards something. When someone that is, if somebody is sitting on the fence, they may be saying, oh, yeah, but Fedora had these breaks that just came his way. And I, and I would, I would say that that's not actually what happened. Sure. Yeah. It was create, they, they did, but how do you view somebody or what would you say to somebody that's like, yeah, but that's, uh, it would, but that's you. It's not me. You know what I'm saying? Does that yeah, make sense no, what I'm saying? 10, because it's like, they're sitting there and I'm like, oh, I got so many words for that person, but I would love to know your words. Yeah. For them. I mean, it's like this, like, you know, I get compliments. Like it's like a small thing. I get compliments on my fedoras all the time. Fam, I've been wearing a fedora for 15 years. You feel what I'm saying? Of course, after 15 years of trying on different ones, different fabrics, different fits, different shapes, of course I got to fly one now. Or I got a shape that speaks to my personality. But you have to fail before you can succeed and find the thing that you're looking for. Like, even with my logos now, like, Fam, I've gone through 45 logos, and none of them spoke to me. And I wasted time, money, effort, energy in trying to make these things work, but none of them really spoke to me until I found that one. And when you have that moment, it's like I knew right away, like, this is the joint I'm going to use for the rest of my career. So I would say, like, even, like, with dance, like, it's a funny story, like, so... When you're in like a dance class, like there's a there's a thing that they call like across the floor, right? So the combination may be like chasse, pas de beret, turn, turn, clap, step, step, jump. Fam, I would jog, jump, jog, step, clap, oh, missed the jump. Jog, step, clap, jump. And literally that iteration of repetition was like how I caught up to the rest of my classmates. But like, you gotta start, you know what I'm saying? Like, you gotta, you gotta jog, fam. Like, you gotta get in motion, you know what I'm saying? But I tell people that like, every person's version of success is different, but you can't get there without movement. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, you gotta, you gotta, the thing that, like somebody told me this the other day is like, the magic in your life is unlocked by the things that you've been avoiding. You know what I mean? Like the, the thing that, ah, man, I don't really, you know, we talking about getting in shape, like, ah, man, I don't really want to hit the gym today. I don't really, well, when you feel better, you perform better, you look better, you do better, more opportunities may come that way. Ah, man, I love this instrument, but it's, it's tough right now. Well, man, you might be right on the other side of, you know what I'm saying? Or like getting that dope lick or, or getting that solo down the way that you, you know what I'm saying? But you got to you gotta keep at it. You know what I'm saying? Like I just have a motor that just runs and runs and runs. You know yes. what I'm saying? Yes, yes. And I love being around people like that. Yeah. Because that's that's contagious. Yeah, 10 times And I think a lot of times people don't get the right people around them that, who has the motor here? You know? Yeah, it's like, Who's 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 got the energy here? We yeah. got someone's got to have it, right? And so if you get a if you get a team, if you get a community, if you get friends that have energy, or momentum, or a, a, a motor like we're talking about, then it's like oh we can actually we can actually go together and pick each other up when we maybe run out of gas or something like that. Ten thousand percent. You know, and 10, when when someone thinks it's a waste, it's actually not a waste. There was nothing in your life that I heard that was a waste. No. Nah. Because it got you to that next moment. So how would you reframe when someone says, yeah, but all of that time spent on your logo, you know, we in the moment may think like, oh, man, that was a waste. But it's actually us moving forward. Yeah. How do you reframe? How do you reframe wastefulness or how do you relook at that? So I look at it like this, like I tell people this all the time. 
if I had the opportunities in my life now, 10 years ago, I would not have been prepared for them. Mm, okay. You know what I mean? Like, stepping into myself now, when you see DJ Fedora, like, it means something, the energy of it, the look of it, the feel of it, like, it is a staple of, of who I am, right? Like, for me though, like, to get there, like, the logo piece, I'm so confident in my logos now because I've rocked with stuff I, that didn't fit me well. You know what I'm saying? It's like that pair of jeans, fam. When you find that pair, every, like, like women have this, but dudes, we have that outfit to where, fam, when you put that outfit on, like, you know you putting it on. You know, yeah. You know you what know. I'm saying? Like, yeah. you know, like, I don't care what's going on. If I'm going to the grocery store, if I'm going to the gala, when I put this joint on, I'm putting it on. You know what I'm saying? But you got to go through different experimentations till you find that joint. You know what I'm saying? You got to wear an oversized jacket till you, till you get to one that's tailored. Like, okay, I see what the vibes is. A lot of times you can't. And then here's the thing. If somebody just gave you a tailored suit, and you never had one that wasn't tailored, could you really appreciate it? You know what I'm saying? Like, and I think that like my life is the way that it is because it's successful, but there is an appreciation for that success. Like one of my favorite comments that people say to me all the time is like, man, Fedora, like you really got it from the bottom. Like you didn't, nobody afforded you no opportunity. People counted you out. But you just kept at it, and we just look up one day, and you just here, and it's like, fam, like because of that premise of you got to just keep going. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like you, yeah, you know I mean, like I like my brother one time, like something got hard for me, and I was like, man, these people really doing me around and all of this. And I'm thinking like he gonna give me like a coddling concern type. He's like, well, just quit. And I'm like, but I got, well, he's like, well, listen, man, you either going to get after it or quit. Because being in the middle, being on the fence is not going to serve you. My thing with people that I wish that people would understand is that when you put 100% in something, it's like hold up till it folds up. So you either like, and I think with young people too, like there's so many vast career choices and career paths. And kids often will be like, when I talk to in the high schools and stuff, they'd be like, well, I don't know what to do. And my answer is do something, right? Pick something and go a thousand miles an hour at it. And I guarantee you that after 90 days of it, you're either gonna know one or two things. This is for me or this is not for me. And then pick another thing. You know what I'm saying? Like. I tell people all the time, man, like, people are like, how could you do ballet? Hey, bro, that was what was in front of me. And so I did it to the best of my ability until something else pulled me. But, you know, I think this, this uh, notion that, you know, things have to be perfect or things have to line up for me, I just don't think that that's necessarily a reality that I live in. You know what I'm saying? Even with, like, the CU thing, Fam, I be calling around. Oh, the team is going to be here. Do y'all need a DJ? Oh, you do? I'll be there. You know what I'm saying? And it'd be like, well, they should do that for you. And there should be somebody including you. Hey, fam, I don't come from that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm like, if you don't work, you don't eat. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. People would be like, well, you should get a brand new shiny car. Nah, man. I'm not Coach Prime. I'm DJ Fedora. I want to be DJ Fedora enough to where somebody's like, I want to give Fedora a shiny car. I don't want to give Fedora a car because he's DJing with Coach Prime. I want my own. You know what I'm saying? And so that's the, that's the mentality I come from, man. Like, instead of asking, creating, and, and making your own way. You know what I mean? Oh, man. Yes, I do. I totally know what you mean because um, you're trying to be the best version of you and who you can be. 10,000%. You're not trying to be anybody else. 10,000%. And you find that out on your way. Oh, yeah. That's what you're talking about. Absolutely. You're talking about between where I am and where I want to go, there's a lot of time. Yeah. And 15 years of doing something over and over and over again, you're going to have a good product, whether it's the hat 
whether it's the sound, whether it's the dance, whether it's the attitude or mindset. And I love, uh, I'm just getting so inspired just even by this conversation. I, I love talking about even just your brand. Yeah, yeah. What do you want people to see or think or feel when it comes to when they see the logo? Right. What is, what is that? So for me, like, so this is a, this is a very, I'm giving you inside info. A lot of people don't know that my name means something like near and dear to me. So even giving you the backstory, a missing piece of that was, you know, I'm traveling now at this time, I'm traveling across the world teaching dance. We're in the DR teaching a, teaching a dance lesson. And, you know, even though I was a salsa dancer, I still don't know a lick of Spanish. Like I still am that dude, like I appreciate the music and the culture, but I don't know Spanish. I'm just keeping it 10,000%. So one of the DJs was like late or something or, you know what I'm saying, whatever. So I had to kind of fill in for a little bit. So I filled in for a couple hours, just played a couple tracks. You know, in the salsa community, you don't really mix records. You just select them, right? So I selected, like, some dope records or whatever, and I had to go, you know what I'm saying, use the bathroom. And the locals were like, where's Fedora? We're looking for Fedora. Like, is he coming back? Like, I just went to go, you know what I'm saying, grab him, come back. So I got back stateside. I was like, man, you know, a lot of the great DJs and stuff I look up to were like, man, like, your name is kind of given to you. You don't really create it, right? So I kind of was was chewing on this fedora thing, and so, you know, coming from a from a so my name is spelled F A apostrophe, and that is to pay homage and root to the to my Latin influences, and then the second half of my name is spelled D O R A H, which is like a hip hop spelling. So for me, fedora is the marriage between Latin and hip hop culture, so it's really what I come from. You know what I'm saying? And so when you hear me and you hear a lot of my sets, you'll hear that fusion. Like, I like to, like, create timeless vibes where it's just, like, you looking up and mom is dancing, grandma's dancing, sister's dancing, everybody's on the same vibe and the same, you know, my, my music is, is limitless, it's genreless, it's just whatever sounds good and creates the vibe, you know what I'm saying? So from a branded perspective, that kind of is my thing, is that, healing and curating people and telling people you deserve this experience like when you come to my party and you're having a good time you deserve it you deserve to for these couple of hours you know put away all your your fears and frustrations and just come out and have a good time now the second entity that just entered my life is like to see you football and like the the coach prime brand right and so Pivoting wise is like in my world of in Fedora, like I am the gold standard. I am the thing. I am the entity. Well, being next to Coach Prime is like flying too close to the sun, right? Like he is that entity, right? And so for me, I just try to be an extension of his brand, right? Like I leverage my brand against his. And so what I tell people in terms of my job up at CU football, I am only trying to enhance his message and the experience for those kids. I'm not trying to distract or be the star of the show. All I want to do is give you your theme music and give these kids a vibe and an experience that enhances the things and the meetings they're in every day to make practice go by easier and, and keep the spirits high. You know what I'm saying? So it's definitely a pivot between the two. <laughs> okay, that's so cool because that's the – that's the progression, right? Like that, it's, it keeps, I love it because you're not, uh, you're not married to what was, you are who you are and you're excited about what will be and Absolutely. what needs to be. Absolutely. And where you're headed. Mm -hmm. And uh, you're very, in, what I'm reading and what I'm picking up is you're very futuristic too. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you're going somewhere. Yeah, to like, like if, you know, like I'm excited about where you're headed. You yeah, know? yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, I'm pumped about where you've been. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm excited and I'm, but I'm keep looking forward. Just even in this conversation, I'm like, huh, what are, like, you got me looking forward. Yeah, yeah. And you honestly got my eyes up too, which I think is what you what you do naturally is you help people get their eyes up. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And uh, I love that. That's like, that's even like kind of biblical, actually. Mm -hmm. You read For that sure. even, and people are all constantly like. Hey, like, why don't you just look up, look up and get your eyes up on what, where you're headed, where you could be going, where we can go together. Absolutely. How can I help? Can yeah. we go somewhere? Could you talk about uh, the difference? Because people need this. <laughs> yeah. There's a difference between 
hey, that's a good Spotify playlist. Press play, DJ. <laughs> and what you do. Okay, so <laughs> yeah. let's just make that immensely clear yeah. in this moment. Absolutely. And I know that people know you know that. Yeah, and absolutely. if they've ever been to your party, they know that. Yeah, 10,000. Uh, so can you, can you color in between those lines? Like, obviously, sure. that's nice to DJ by playing different music in the car. But, like, right, right. what we're talking about yeah. is creation. And yeah, changing whole, uh, changing whole environments, absolutely. changing whole moods. Absolutely. I mean, it's much like I can give you a box of crayons and a sheet of paper, and you can do something with that. But then I can give an actual artist the same box of crayons and the same sheet of paper, and their interpretation and the, that use of those tools and that medium is much, much different. I tell people what makes a DJ unique is that I can take those 10 songs from your Spotify playlist and I can rearrange and deliver them to you in a way that it makes it sound like something totally different than what you had. And so there's that part of the creation part to where I am dissecting, you know, milliseconds of records and drum patterns and, and loops and things that help me c reconstruct a bigger painting, right? but also the part of seeing the sounds in my environment. But I'm looking at you, Trevor, and I'm saying, you know what? I just played the Gap Band, and Trevor nodded his head. So I know that I'm on to something. Because I see you from the time you walk into the club to the time you put on, take off that first coat to the time you grab your first beverage. And I, and I can see a clock over your head. I say, all right, he's two songs in. By this next song, he's going, you know what I'm saying, start getting up. By song number five, Trevor's going to be out here with me. You know what I'm saying? And I see, the, I see those meters over everybody's head. So the thing about it is I also can see when I play a record that Trevor doesn't like and that Trevor's like, I wasn't feeling that. You know what I'm saying? But here's the thing of the mastery of it, and I learned this from um, my DJ Scratch, one of my favorite DJ. So he told me when he came to Denver and I was able to have a conversation. He's like, hey, man, it's the rule of three. You have three songs to lose a dance floor, right? Three bad songs can lose any dance floor. But the beautiful thing in that is when you really step into your artistry is I have three songs to play with, right? So I may play two songs that Trevor doesn't like and then play a song you love just to give you an experience, right? So... I'm going to take you up and down. And so when you go home with your buddies, I'm like, man, remember that DJ? He was great. We partied this and we had a chance to sit down and then we did it. So I'm going to take you through that vacuum of emotions, right? Because even me playing something you don't like, you're still reacting in a sense, right? I'm still taking you on the journey. When you watch a movie, you don't love every part of the movie, but it's the, the symbiotic of the, and the idiosyncrasies of those little bit moments that stack up to where when those credits roll, you'd be like, you know what, all in all, I would watch it again or I would recommend this to somebody. And that's kind of what it is when it comes to DJing with me is like stacking those experiences. Like I'm really looking for an authentic individual experience that I can deliver to you that just playing a playlist will never do. Because your, your playlist is not reacting to the room or sensing the energy or, or seeing what, what needs to happen. Okay, so I, I need everyone, myself included, to hear what you just said. Yeah. Because what you're saying is to be a professional, to be a pro, you are not just playing music. You're not At just all. pressing play. Right. You're reading the details of everything Absolutely. and everyone that's a part of it. And you aren't playing music. You're creating a memory. Absolutely. Worth remembering. Absolutely. You're a memory maker. Absolutely. You're a moment maker that's, that you're trying to say, like, I want someone to remember this, and I want them to be immensely positively affected by it. 10,000%. And, dude, like, I'm, a, like, I'm all in. Like, right. I can't wait for, our, for your next party. And so, like, I'm there. Uh, I was actually, it was funny is, I was at a wedding recently, and they had a great DJ, and I was like, you could tell. Right. Because I'm like, well, we're dancing. We're having a blast. Absolutely. It's so much fun. Absolutely. And so, uh, I love creating moments. And what's fun is, like, I can close my eyes, and I can, like, think about there being a meter 
of happiness above everyone that you were talking about. Absolutely. Of like, okay, here's where they are on the process of getting on the dance floor. Here's where he is. Here's where she is. And you're like, you're reading the whole room. And then you're like, okay, here's where we're going to go next. I got three songs. And how do you, how do you, uh, this is kind of interesting. We were talking about this earlier. How do you critique yourself or how do you get better as a DJ? Absolutely. In like maybe even the post production for the next round because I know you are you said this earlier you're like I'm my worst critic and 10,000% so like how does that how does that work because I think that needs to play into like whoever wants to become a pro at whatever they're trying to do yeah I mean it's it's almost like a football team right like we we go see the game on Sunday but we don't realize those guys have been at practice since Monday right and so one is you know my D, I call it my DJ homework you know you hear a, a favorite song well, as soon as I hear that favorite song, I'm trying to think about what else can I add to it, put behind it, get another version of it, get a cover of it. That's the first thing. But secondly, like after every gig that I do, I go back and I analyze, you know, a lot of people don't know I have a photographic memory too. So that's kind of like a cheat code that helps me. But I take snapshots of this record, what it was doing to the room. Did I like it? Why did I like it? Why didn't I like it? And I will literally go back and whatever set that I played, I'll rearrange it in my mind. Like, oh, this would have made it better. Oh, this song, if I would have, if I would have, because it's, it's so crazy. Like, I can have a party that's rocking for four hours. And as soon as I unplug, all the songs that I could have played just come, it's like a floodgate. Like, literally, and I have a note on my phone where I can open it, and it's, it'll show the date. And it'll be like, show the event. And it'll be like, all the records that, ah, oh, man, you had a great, but if you would have... It's like squeezing the orange, right? You're making fresh orange. You're trying to squeeze that orange to get every morsel of that juice out of it that you can. And so for me, my standards have always been high because I'm always squeezing that juice. I mean, there's there's absolutely times where I've played a four-hour set, gone home, set my DJ stuff back up, and DJ that same four hours to tweak and better what I did and, and improve upon it. So there's definitely a sense of, you know, always trying to better yourself with this because – you know, even technology is new. Uh, you know, I went, I came from the turntable era to the computer era, and now we got these computers with these controllers that are doing, you know, I can literally deconstruct a record in real time. You know what I mean? Like, any record that you have, I can take out the drums, the vocals, add the mel add a different melody. Like, DJs are becoming more like producers and musicians in, in this day and age, you know, in time. So staying on top of all of those things because the performance is really a the very a very little piece of what we do it's like the the collection of all the things we've been working on getting to showcase and and share with you all all the things that kind of go into our daily grind of you know learning our craft for sure oh man i was uh recently i i saw uh a dj and i listened to him and it was so cool because he was bringing everything together live, and then he was slowly uh, taking out things and then slowly adding back. And it was Absolutely. just so much – it was so much fun. And I know, like, you've, you've got a lot of things that you're juggling right now. And I think it's really important for us um, to even just think about, like, the, the craziness that you view music. Yeah. Because how you even see music, how you even – uh, view it is 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 crazy and I'd love for you to take kind of that and lead us into okay now here's because we've hinted at it you're you're wearing like the prime fedora collab <laughs> sweatshirt right here too because you can see yeah, yeah. you can see like it's like it's like his brand meets you and it's like that's fresh and so I just um I would love for you to take like maybe how you view music and then how you viewed even just How'd you even get the opportunity to be the official DJ for yeah, the CU Buffs? And, absolutely. And bring that together if you don't mind. So for me, it's, it's like a, it's a beautiful thing because, again, like my, you know, working community has really been the driving success of all the things that are now manifesting in my life. So two people can directly be responsible for my involvement up at CU Football. One is Chauncey Billups. And two is uh, one of my DJ mentors, KDJ Above. And I'll tell you why. So basically, I have been doing community work for Chauncey for a long, long time. Like, 
Uh, he has his Billups Porter Foundation and some of his elite basketball camps and all the things and just been involved in, you know, community things with the youth. And so and then, you know, my DJ mentor, KDJ above, he's just he's like my musical brother. Like he's somebody that I aspire to musically. And he's just as a as a person, he's just like a very solid person. So originally he got the call to do the gig up with at C, with CU football from Chauncey. And he literally out of his mouth was like, I know somebody that's just a better fit, right? He's just like, for what I have going on, I literally know somebody that's a better fit. So he was graciously enough to be like, yeah, um, DJ Fedora. Be. And then Chauncey was like, I know Fedora. Like, yeah, I've worked with Fedora. I didn't know he was still around. So um, kind of those two people were kind of what got it, you know, clicking and then, that got me on campus, right? So that got me for the first spring game. And so speaking to like, you know, we talk about professionalism and, and things of that nature, what a lot of people don't understand, talent alone is not enough in this business for sure. And so when I got that call for the spring game, I was there three hours early, right? I was there three hours before they told me to be there which ended up being something ridiculous, like five or something in the morning. So I'm like, I'm there before the parking people and I'm there, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I can park wherever I want to park. Like I'm there before all of that infrastructure is, is up and, and running. So I get there and this is a funny story. This is breaking news too. So in my thought process, I'm thinking about back when I played football, right? Like, and the stuff that we listened to, to like get in the mood and get ready. So I get there, you know, and I have a couple, you know, hours to kill and I'm kind of like going through records and kind of, you know, putting my little playlist together and things that I think is gonna work. Team starts showing up and all the things. And in the locker room, they have like a little like, uh, like iPad situation where the players can kind of play some music or whatever like that. And so they weren't necessarily ready for me to start live DJing. So like the players are like playing some of their joints. I realized that what I thought we was going to be listening to and what they was listening to were stratospheres apart, right? So what I did to get through that spring game is so interesting is I took out my Shazam and I was just like Shazamming. And I got like maybe like 30 records off to where I was like, okay, I know they like these records. Took that, went back in the headphones, listened to those 30 records, and like, it's almost like if I'm doing an event, right? I call it your musical diet. You can give me 20 songs, and I can build 100 songs off those 20 songs you gave me, because music is all related in the same family. So I took those 30 records, ran to the little thing, got me a little Wi-Fi, and literally compiled a playlist like on the spot, and that got me through the spring game, and like, Literally, like, all the records that I played, I got on site. Like, all the stuff that I had that I thought was going to go down, it was not going to go down. I was going to sound like the old guy playing for the young kids. <laughs> so I grabbed all that music, got through the spring game, but then I had the intuition to, like, DJ before. Because really they brought me in to do the – give me my theme music and that was supposed to be like, that was just it, right? That was really what I was hired to do. But I DJ before, got the players hype doing that, played a little bit at half, did the give me my theme music, then played a little bit at halftime. And then after the game, like I just sat around and I just played music for like maybe like two hours while the, while the coaches and the players, you know, cleared out and like there was families there and visiting and stuff. It was just a good look, you know what I'm saying? And so really, that job wasn't really a job until they saw kind of how I presented it and how I did it. And so then, and I'm sitting on my, you know, it's like sitting on pins and needles, like, you know what, I think I did a good job. Like, I think they was feeling it, whatever. And also, I'm like getting on my DJ homework, like, yo, I'm never gonna walk into this situation like unprepared ever again. Like, I'm like, just by the grace of God, I got through this, right? So I start going, going in on the research and all the things. I'm looking at the players' social medias. I'm doing all my homework and just getting any blip of music that I can. And so I get a call for the first game, and then that's just kind of reiterated. But then also, like, 
I'm trying to add something to the table, right? So now I'm, I got custom gold grills on my speakers and I, you know, went and got a, a DJ rig that's black and gold. So like I'm trying to add to the branding and adding to the look of, of things. And so every game that I got called, because the first season was really like a game by game basis. There was never like a, you're our guy type situation, right? So I literally just, every time that I walked into that locker room, I would bring something new and something different to the table, whether it was custom, you know, gear. Now I got custom speakers, a custom hoodie. Like even the hoodie came about because, you know, again, there's so many moving parts to see you football, right? And I'm like, at this point in time, like the credential thing was like kind of, you know, hit or miss. And I'm kind of like having to grab people to pull me through doors and stuff. I said, you know what? There's got to be a better way. There's a better mousetrap. I said, let me make a fedora, let, let, me make a, let me make a DJ fedora hoodie that like says that I'm the locker room DJ on the back of it. So if I do that, this is gonna serve as a credential. So my hoodies came about from a very practical application. Like you can see this big locker room DJ on the back of my hoodie. So that's going to allow me to kind of maneuver a little bit more freely. And so that's kind of just how it was, man. And that on top of just building relationships. I can tell you when I walk in that, you know, uh, Champion Center, I can tell you from Patty at the Front School store to Big Steve, the locker room manager, I have relationships with all of those guys. You know what I'm saying? From the security guards to, to everybody. Everybody I come in contact with, I try to give a, you know, a, remember their names, give them a good word, but really that's kind of what's kept me, you know, in that position. And then the more and more integrated I became, the more and more they could, you know, there was trust built through that, and then I just became more of a thing naturally and organically. I never asked anybody to follow me. I never asked anybody to make me anything. My whole premise up at CU Football, add value, add value, add value. Now you're bringing through recruits and they say, oh, this team has a DJ. And I look at his custom gold, this, and his, his tablecloths. And oh, this is cool. I want to be a part of this. So just like literally my premise up at CU Football was just add value. Don't ask Coach Prime for anything just add value. And through adding value, you know, I was noticed in my own unique way. Like I, it was just an organic growth. You know what I'm saying? For sure. Oh man, add value. Yeah. Absolutely. I, I mean like that is, and, and you've done that and that just echoes luck. Yeah. Luck, I believe follows love. Yeah. Now love is adding value to somebody. To if I care about somebody, if I care about something, well, what I'm going to do, yes, you're not going to say like, Maybe I love you. That's not what we're talking about. But what I'm talking about is it comes from a place of like, I love being here. I love being a part of this. Yeah. I love what I get to do. I love the organization. I love uh, these friendships that I'm getting to build. Like that, from that place, then the opportunity follows and it looks like luck, but it's actually the source is I love this. 10,000%. And the source is love. 10,000%. And man, like this whole, like this whole thing that you're doing, man, is so inspirational and so powerful. And people need to know that. And I think people that are trying to go somewhere. Yeah. This is, th I, like, people that are trying to go somewhere with their life. They need this kind of inspiration and practicality that you just brought to the table. Yeah. They I need that. Sure. And it's like, if I, if I try to get from, I get nothing. Absolutely. But if I try to give to, I gain everything. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, for me, like, when it really comes down to it, somebody in Coach Prime's position, everybody that he comes in, in contact with is asking for something. Yeah. Can I get a picture? Yeah. Can I get an autograph? Right. Can you help my family? Can you support my business? Can you, can you, can you, can you? And I'm just not from that school. You know what I mean? Like, for me, like, if I'm looking out for you and you're looking out for you, who's looking out for me? You know what I'm saying? And if you look at Coach Prime, he, that's he's not a, a relationship. Right. Like, it's at all. And if you look at Coach Prime, like, one, people don't say this enough about Coach Prime. That man is under an immense amount of pressure, an immense amount. Like, I've seen it in real time. Like, I can't fathom how broad his shoulders are to even attempt to take on what he's taking on up at CU Boulder, right? 
um, not only from a from a football standpoint, from a cultural standpoint, from a Boulder history standpoint. I mean, he is up against a lot of things. And so what I try to be up there is like out of sight, out of mind. We know when we hire Fedora, he going to be on time and he going to do what he asks us to do. And when it's time to unplug, baby, I'm in the car. You know what I'm saying? I'm not sticking around. <laughs> I'm not chilling. I'm not trying to get, get it for the gram in this day and age. You know what I'm saying? I'm just, and the thing about it is like when I have changed my orbit and changed the process of trying to, you know, take or receive from people, you realize that your interactions in general are more authentic and genuine. Like Master P came up to me and had a 10 minute conversation with me because he genuinely wanted to know who I was and what I was doing and my aspirations. Like Cameron came up to me and we had a 20 minute conversation because he genuinely believes in me and like what I was doing and what I added to the environment. So it's like, you know, we, we got to get out of the standpoint of that somebody's coming to save us or that we're entitled to a certain something, right? Because I'm not entitled to anything, you know what I mean? And I would be lying to you if I didn't think every other day how many other people want to be CU's official DJ and what do I need to do to not only get that position but keep it. Gosh, yes, yes. And, and how do you... Uh, because I love this. Uh, we would play music um, when I was uh, with with a team, and uh, not see you, but like when I was with uh, University of Tennessee for five years and um, serving there on uh, on the team uh, with the team. We would play music, but like the the DJ is pretty new. Yeah, the live Absolutely. music is very new. Absolutely. Uh, to someone actually track, and when you just play tracks, it changes the whole mood. Absolutely. Pre, before, in game, around plays, but practice is actually what I view is the most valuable piece. Absolutely, because um, not everyone wants to be a practice. Right. Okay, and it practices really hard. Absolutely, because it's difficult. Everyone's looking forward to the game. I think it's easier to play music at the game. Yeah, yeah. Especially when you get it down. Environment. But like, yes. The environment's already kind of set. The energy is really high. Everyone's right. excited to be there. Well, what's hard is playing music at practice sometimes S to get people to want to be there and to have fun and to enjoy practice. Can you talk about, like, like how do you view your role on the team? How do you view adding value to this organization? That's because a very, it's not just playing music. That's yeah, absolutely. A thing. Yeah, absolutely. I, you know, the way that I look at my position up at CU football is I'm literally just trying to be the soundtrack of the team. You know, for me, like, and when you think about being the soundtrack of something, the input is really very minimal. It's normally about how do I, if I know Trevor likes this song, I'm going to play that song for Trevor because it's going to put Trevor in a good mood to do whatever he's doing for the day. Right. Like if you if Trevor had a personal soundtrack, how would that sound when he's when he's waking up, when he's getting ready to go work out? And so for me, that's what I think about, you know, in the beginning of practice, I may start with a little bit of old school stuff to, you know, get the energy high, a little bit of funk or something like that because – And to help the coaches. And it, it, one, it helps the coaches, but two, what it reminds our young men of, as I've had players come up to me and say, man, this reminds me of my mom and dad. This reminds me of, this feels like home, man. Yeah, this is what cool. we listen to at the barbecue. You know what I mean? Like, thank you for playing that DJ because that reminds me of a time when, when this was that, right? And so it, it's that sense of, you know, Prime really preaches it's bigger than football and that it's a family in Boulder, right? They are a family. So, you know, a lot of times when we are doing these family gatherings and things of that nature, Music is a centerpiece of a lot of our lives, and whether it be a wedding, a family reunion, a barbecue, a cookout. So all of those things. And then, you know, we do the old school, and then we may, you know, transition to some, some newer stuff to get the players hype. And, you know, now it's hard work time. So a lot of the themes of the music are, are hard work and dedication and, and doing all the things. So, you know, when you hear things, you know, it, it's a, like a diet. It ingests into you. So when you hear a song that's saying, let's go, let's work hard, that we're dedicated to this, it can't help but translate 
through what you're doing. And so it keeps the energy and the morale of the players high, and it just it, it makes them want to do what they what they do. And like I said, it's it's an enhancement piece for me. And that's what music does. Absolutely. And 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 like if if we want to change our 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 mindset or our vision or what we're caring about, the music that we that we ingest. And digest, I like that. Absolutely. The digest actually sets us up to be able to perform in that type of way. Absolutely. Or to be that type of person or to have that kind of mindset. Absolutely. Yeah, man, that's so practical. Um, I love that so much. Uh, when, you, when you look at your future, mm -hmm. what does it look like? I mean, I have some benchmarks. You know, I have, so local benchmarks are like, I want to do a show at Mission Ballroom. I want to play Red Rocks. I feel like those are just like staples of being a Coloradan, being a Colorado musician, being a Colorado artist. I think that when you make it to some of those stages, um, it's just a, an overall sense of accomplishment and gratitude at the same time. So actively working uh, towards some of those goals. I also see myself as like, you know, I wanna put together a show that's an experience I'm kind of growing out of just DJing, right? Just the position of just DJing. I'm kind of one of those people to where I've gone to a lot of live shows recently and I'm, I'm looking at the visuals and the lighting and the experience of it and the feel and the texture of things, right? So I want to create a fedora experience that you can come and get a one of a kind experience that's curated by me and some of the most impactful music in my life and impactful, you know, and I, and, I, and my whole hope is that in this experience that you leave better than you came, you know what I mean? So um, actively working uh, with that, uh, obviously still being a part of CU football um, for as long as that may hold and, and may grant me that opportunity. Um, but really, man, just playing on more stages, I want to, I'm so diverse in musical taste because of my background being a classically trained dancer. So, you know, I want to do some country nights. I want to do some, you know, some rock nights. I want to do some different things, right? I think that sometimes things can get a little boxy and a little, little clicky at times, but I'm really trying to break some more of those barriers um, and just do some different things, man. Lay my hands on some different things. And I feel like my old man job is I want to score movies. Like, I feel like that's, like, to put me out to pasture, like, right before, you know what I mean? <laughs> I like, that. I feel like all the experience, you know what I mean? Like, I think, like, my old man job is, like, scoring movies, but I feel like in between that, like, being a fly radio host, like, radio DJ, I feel like that would be a vibe as well. But those are, like, you know what I mean? I'm still young enough to, like, because you got to have hands on you to get in the clubs. So I ain't just really the, all the DJ, I ain't ready just to hang up my, you know, these hands yet, but... I feel like, you know, down the line, five, ten years down the line, you know, maybe like scoring some movies and, and, and help creating art, help bring other artists' visions to life uh, as well would be dope. Oh, man, that's so cool. Uh, as, as you, oh, man, I'm, I love that. Like, like you're like Hans Zimmerman. Like, <laughs> yeah, like, facts. <laughs> like, facts. Uh, okay, if you, were, if you were to be like, I would redo the score or – I would love to be on the score on this type of movie. What would it be? Oh, man. That's such a good question. So I feel like, you know, <laughs> in our youth, we really fight being like our parents. Like, we're like, nah, I'm so different. <laughs> right. right? Yeah. Yeah. Like, when you hit, like, 35, fam, like, you start to realize, like, I like a lot of stuff that they liked. And, like, my dad loves old Western movies. And, like, fam, I'm just getting to that era in my life where I can appreciate like a John Wayne, like shoot him up, bang, bang, Western joint. So I feel like redoing like a dope Western music with like a little bit more like, you know what I'm saying, culture and some vibes in it, I think that would be fly. Oh, sure. that is, that was not even <laughs> close to what I was thinking you were gonna say. And I love the answer. <laughs> yeah, I love, man. dude. Okay, so my dad, yeah. Uh, brought me up on those as well. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, I remember all of them 
that w- that we watched or like a like a tombstone yeah type of Wyatt Earp yeah. oh my gosh right Facts. just that would be so fun right oh man I'm here for that yeah Sheesh. I'm saying uh, I used what? to hate watching them and now I love watching them <laughs> right I yeah, love yeah. watching I need them. something a little slower <laughs> yeah. I, my brain's going so fast I need something to slow my brain That's down a fact. little bit yeah um, if you were to say hey you need to learn this whether you're learning it right now or the person that's viewing this like what's a staple thing that you have either learned or are learning in your life? Oh, man, balance, fam. It's all about balance. You know what I mean? Like, I'm on my health journey now, and people think, like, they got to smash it in the gym and, and you know, be on creatine and work out 20,000 times a day. Fam, you just need balance. You know what I'm saying? Like, literally, like, just a little bit of balance, fam. Don't smash a, a Big Mac at 3 in the morning. You know what I'm saying? Like, get up and, and take a walk. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, I think balance is absolutely key. But I think that also, like, having some kind of relationship with music, whether learning how to read music, learning how to play an instrument, uh, that's one thing that I feel like I'm is, is going to be a next step in my career is, like, really tuning in to, like, learning how to play something. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, you know, back when, like, when I was in high school, like, the acoustic guitar player, like, got all the love, like, and all the ladies, too. So, like, th- we need to bring back that, you know what I'm saying? Like, the acoustic guitar, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know what I'm saying? Bon Jovi vibe, like, you know what I'm saying? Sitting outside yes. on the tree, tree stop with your Birkenstocks yeah. on. Shirt off. Yeah, <laughs> shirt open, you know what I'm saying? No, or off, on. depending yeah. on what kind of body you have. <laughs> Sure, but um, sure. I'm a shirt open guy right now. I'm working on shirt off, but I'm a, I'm a shirt open, like three buttons. I'm working down to three buttons right now. Um, but, yeah, like I'm, I'm trying to learn how to, you know what I mean, do the acoustic guitar. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I, I think like just having a vibe with music in general. And I tell people, even if you're a playlist person, fam, go out there and just search. Like people that tell me I don't like the new music and I don't like this or like that, Fam, you're not looking hard enough. Like, people tell me all the time, I don't like country music. Fam, I got some country records that you like. Guaranteed. I don't like this type of music. Fam, you don't, you have not researched enough to know you don't like this. You know what I'm saying? It's like you can have two different chefs cook you the same meal, and a certain chef's seasoning did it for you. You know what I'm saying? So I tell people like that, like, Less clothes, mindedness, be a little bit more open, you know, and like the more stuff you try, like any foodie will tell you this, the more stuff you try, the more defined your palate becomes. I feel like my taste in music, like even like from a dance thing, there was this little tidbit from Rennie Harris. So Rennie Harris was a famous photographer, uh, not photographer, fa- famous choreographer in New York that I had a chance to take some classes from. And I was like, man, I want to be a hip hop dancer. Like I want to be in the music videos, touring with Janet. Like, what do I need to do? Like, I'm, I'm dead serious. Like, tell me what I need to do to be a hip-hop dancer. Like, right now, I'm going to do whatever you say. And he literally said, take everything but hip-hop. You want to be the best hip-hop dancer, take everything but hip-hop, then circle back to it. And he was right. Doing different types of music, different types. Ty- when I listen to that music now, I hear different things. It presents itself differently to me than it would if I had never gone on those journeys. So I think just being a little bit more open, man. We could all use a little bit more openness, you know what I'm saying, in today's society for sure. The tool belt gets way bigger. And when you have all of the tools, you can make anything you want. Absolutely. I mean, I love that. Yeah, absolutely. And I I agree. I think the experts uh, are better at some people's fields than those people. Absolutely. Because they're the best in the world. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, And when you look at your future, I don't know. I actually don't know the answer to this question. Uh, Are you on Spotify? I am not. I'm working on that. I so I have. I will say this. One of my Achilles' heels is two things. Was two. It's twofold. One, I don't curate enough stuff for people to come tune into. So I'm work. I'm actively working on that. Like people have told me all the time, like Fedora, put out a playlist and let us listen to it so we can like get an introspective view of how you do things. Working on that piece. And then the other thing is like making mixes. For some reason, I'm such a live performance guy. I feel like me giving it to you in that form doesn't do it justice in sure, a sense. Sure, sure. So I struggle with that. And I'm 
because I'm always a, a harsh critic of myself, I'll mix it. I'd be like, man, I need to redo that thing. Yeah. And so one mix turns that should take an hour, turns into a, you know a ten hour thing, and I'm like, ah. So I'm trying to get better with that, ladies and gentlemen. So I will work on in the next year. I'll work on getting <laughs> some things out me. there. Don't be mad at yeah. me. <laughs> no, you good. No, but it's it's something that needs to be said because in our digital age, how we consume things is important. You know what I'm saying? Like, and and the and the simple fact that. Most of your favorite artists, you can go tap in. You know, people that see this, they, it, it can be very, you know, viable. Hey, I want to hear a DJ Fedora mix. It's not a whole lot of those out there right now. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But we definitely got some stuff coming for sure. That, that, that's, that's great to hear. That's one of, that was one of my biggest issues yeah. as well. And, you know, when we were looking at starting this podcast and doing this kind of thing, um, I was like, I don't know if I'm, I don't know if I can do that. I don't know if I'm ready. I don't know if I want to put that out there. Right. Because I'm going to want to edit everything. And so we made a few different rules that we were like, hey, look, we're actually more committed to helping people than being perfect. There it is. I'm more that committed part. to giving than I am, which is, goes back to your thing. Yeah, yeah. More committed to giving what I have without and, and, than I am to you thinking that I have it all together or that I'm perfect. 10,000%. That was, that was, that was, uh, you you have other things that you're you're thinking about because it's really hard. I don't know if people know this, but it's really hard to take a live set right. and make it sound that way. Yeah, a thousand percent. Because the the way that the music sounds in the room is way different than. It's not just like hey, just record what's the sound in the room. It's like hold on, it's different. Yeah, that is that is not how it really works. And so, dude, I do that would be phenomenal. And then you what you you know what you could do is when you get on Spotify. Maybe you just release one track. And then yeah. you put uh, DJ Fedora's favorite uh, uh, inspirational um, Western yeah, songs yeah. or wow, country songs. Yeah. And then you can like start curating playlists on Spotify, you know, just with one. Yeah, and it's crazy because I make playlists for people all the time. I bet I'll you do. I have people like, hey, man, I'm working out. Hit me with a playlist. I'm like, bam, 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 bam. There it is. And I'm like, man, I should do that for myself. Yes. Like, I really should like yes. put out. Different mixes for different vibes. Like this is my morning routine playlist. This is my, you know what I'm saying? I'm I'm brushing my teeth joint. This is my exercise workout playlist. You know what I'm saying? My study, you know what I mean? Like I was big like with study halls and all that. And you know, this is my study hall vibe. So I, I definitely I gotta do better, Trevor. I I definitely do. <laughs> well, no, it's okay. It's okay. I I'm not I'm not trying to commit you. I'm not I'm not <laughs> no, this, this is not a subtweet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, that was it. Uh, I just uh honestly I was thinking, oh, I would love that. Yeah, absolutely. I was just thinking personally, oh man, if you are, I would love that and I'd love to talk about that. For sure. Um, so that's cool. Maybe that's like the dream. Maybe that's what we're dreaming. And I think sometimes it's like we need to get to the place of Gitmo. Have you heard of Gitmo? Nah, what's that? Gitmo, G E T M O. Okay. Good enough to move on. Oh, okay. I like that. I love that. That's a t shirt. That is definitely t shirt vibes. Good enough to move on yeah. is such a good headspace because it's not going to be 100, but. I'm okay with 80. Yeah. You know, and it's yeah. like maybe I have a community of like three or four of my, of the like the close people in my life that says like, hey, you're actually my crew on the Gitmo. I need yeah, you yeah. to listen to this and see if it's if it's who I am and it's good enough to move on so that I'm not the one having to like be like, all right, it's Man, good because you'll never do, do yeah. that. <laughs> you'll I, I am notorious. Do yeah, I'm notorious for not knowing when to move on. <laughs> well, I will, I'm, I'm picking I that, that, that up. Thing. I'm picking yeah, that up. Uh, hey, look, if you're um, if you're taking applications, I'm in. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> if I'm you're taking that. for applications for that, I'll send, give you my resume. I'll uh, I'd love to be a part of your Gitmo so, team. I'm down. Um, I'm down with um, that. If you're down with that. <laughs> so, that um, and then, man, man, this this is a question, and we'll end with this question. Yeah. Um, I love asking, um, people this. We're gonna be doing this um the year. We, you're actually the first episode in year two of the podcast. Hey. So this is pretty sick. Uh, we're kind of launching it with this amazing conversation with you. Uh, this year, I'm going to ask everyone, what's their favorite question? Oh, okay. We're going to end with, what's your favorite question, whether you're asking it right now or you've been asking it or you keep revisiting it. Um, what's your favorite, what's the question right now from you for us? I think that my favorite question just on the human level 
is, I would say it's two questions. One is, what is your why? And the second question that I always tend to ask myself, I ask people is, how do you deal with adversity? Hmm. Right? Um, I think that your purpose in doing something is just as much, like I can tell, I'm at the age now where intention is everything. Right? Like the other day, I went and got my brakes done. But the way in which they did my brakes, it didn't sit well with me because it felt a little misleading, a little, you know what I mean? When the same person could do that in a way to where the job still got done, but I didn't feel good about that. You go sit out, down at a restaurant, right? You have, you, everybody's had that server where it's like, man, take all my money, fam. Like literally, I've, I've given servers more money than the mill itself because like, man, I've never felt so good about spending my money. The intention in which they move and their why for doing the reasons why they're doing what they're doing. Then you get that server, you're like, fam, DoorDash next time. You know what I'm saying? Like you like, yo, fam, like this is what, this is your thing. Like music, is like this is your thing. This is like, mm, like you're, the reason why maybe it's not lining up and so maybe you need to find something else or realign with that reason, right? And then the adversity piece is just like, Trevor, you know, anybody can do a sun, sunny day with you, yeah. right? But what happens when that road gets rocky? Like that Gitmo crew, like you're talking about, like, how are we going to do adversity together? When I'm upset at you or you're frustrated at me, how does that look for you? What is your process? Yeah. You know what I mean? How do you unplug? How do you take space? Do you have a process in which when you're out of alignment, do you know? And what is your process for realignment? You know what I mean? Um, so those would be the two for me. I think the, those are amazing too. And I think they pair really well together. Yeah. Because your why will influence how you handle. 10,000%. And your why will influence if you're going to stay in it. Absolutely. And then also your why will influence who gets around you to help you through it. And, uh, yeah, man, I couldn't um, – I couldn't ask for two better questions to start the second year of the podcast. Man. Uh, excited for this. And, man, ex I just really honestly excited for you. I appreciate it. You got so many, like, you're in process. And I think that's one of the most amazing things is no matter how much we've made it, if we value the journey more than making it, we will keep going on the journey. 10,000%. And that's who I want to surround myself with. 10,000%. So man. I could not have asked for a better new friend to come oh, into yeah, my man. life. For sure. And uh, to you pray for. In to be excited for yeah. and uh yeah just i think you find a friend when you're almost when you're more excited for them than they are for them Ten thousand percent and it's hard when you're going through your thing to be excited about what you're going through because you're so worried about the thing yeah you right. know what i mean it's right. like if i could just get right people like and i and i will say this to all of my community to all the people that send me love and messages keep doing so for all the people that are praying for me and want the best for me and keep doing so. I am elated and excited um, and also scared and nervous and doing all the things that I, I want to make myself proud, my community proud, the people around me proud, uh, the city of Denver proud, the city of Boulder that I come from proud. I mean, I'm just elated with the blessings and how God has been so good to me this past year in my life, I mean, God is good all the time, but I mean, this this past year has just been like, I'm like, this is my life. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. and it's, it's one of those things that's interesting is like, I see these memes all the time that, you know, you're living right now the life that you prayed for. And a lot of people don't take enough time to realize that, man, there was a time, Trevor, where I was like, I just want some gigs. Like, can somebody just give me some gigs? I was pushing carts at Walmart. Like, can I just get some gigs? And now I look up like, I don't have any time. It's all gigs. It's all music <laughs> all the time. So uh, it's truly been a blessing, man. And I, I just want to say to you, I, I can't not thank you enough for having me. Uh, I've, I've watched the, the podcast, and I think that it's a beautiful thing that you're doing. And we need this. We need spaces to communicate to one another and, and um, uh, uplift and recharge and you know like they say iron sharpens iron so you know i definitely uh feels like family and in the midst of good people so i can't thank you enough man no i appreciate it uh if somebody 
is trying to connect with you. Yes. And and pay the right amount of money <laughs> in the middle of all the gigs <laughs> or whatever. Uh, what? Uh, how do they? How do they connect with you? Or how do they reach out? Great question. So main uh, mode of transportation and connection is going to be uh, Instagram, uh, just at DJ Fedora, DJ F A D O R A H. And then I also have a website, uh, www.djfedora.com. Uh, you can put an inquiry right in that thing and I'll get back to you and all the things. But yeah, man, we just uh, rocking out, getting ready for, for this next year and, and all the things and blessings that God has. For Come sure. on. Come on. Well, this is uh, such a good episode. Um, can't wait to see what happens with all the things. Thank you for joining us on uh, Full Vantage Podcast. If you could, if you want to support us this year too, uh, just subscribe and follow along on whatever the platforms you listen and uh, check out what he is going to do this year. And uh, shout out to CU Football. Bam, bam, bam. Uh, we're on the move. And, Let's go Buffs. Uh, let's go <laughs> Buffs. Uh, see you guys later. Full Vantage Podcast. Peace.